some of my greatest influences have been painters and I love visiting museums when I'm traveling. So if I get the chance to go and see a Magritte painting, whether it's in Houston or Belgium, I find that's a, a source of inspiration for me. I like Salvador Dali, especially some of his early works, and Max Ernst and Hieronymus Bosch. I also like just collecting things and going to antique stores and flea markets and looking for little bits and pieces that might fit into my work. You never know what it is that's going to strike a nerve or be inspiring or be something that I want to work with. I love working with the computer. I love working with Photoshop. Usually I don't start with any particular idea of what I'm going to be making. I just start with either an old photograph or engraving or some little object that I've collected and I feel a particular sense of mystery or intrigue. I start by scanning something in and retouching it and figuring out what else might work with it. Over the years, I've collected a lot of ambrotypes and daguerreotypes and tintypes. I like using the 19th century people in my images. I like using and recycling these ready-made people that I have in my collection. I work a lot on the clothing and the details and retouching before I really take off in any one direction with a new image. I really don't have a preconceived idea when I'm starting to work as to what the final finished piece will look like. Back in the 1980s, I went to school and got an MFA degree in photography. This was during the time when people still worked in the darkroom. I enjoyed making still life images and I loved working in color and collecting all kinds of little objects. In 1996, when I was married to the photographer Jerry Yulesman, people talked to him about making an image for Adobe and we suddenly got a nice small Macintosh computer. I think it was a Mac 2 LC. And I started to work digitally from that point on. I taught myself Photoshop back in 1996. It just involved reading a manual that wasn't very large. And over the years, I've incrementally learned the newer features of Photoshop. My work has gotten more complex over the years. I'm using more layers and more adjustments on things now than I used to. The most stressful part of working is starting a new piece because you never know exactly what direction it's going to go in or if it's going to take off at all. So I usually work for a week or so on an image and generally I feel rather frustrated during this first period of time. Eventually, as something clicks and I kind of get to understand the internal logic of the image, I come up with a better grasp or concept of what it is that I want to do with it. And from that point on, usually it just kind of flows. Often I work on images for three or four weeks or even longer. Things can sit in my computer and I return to them and tweak them a little bit over and over again, sometimes for months. Sometimes there can be one image that leads to another one. I could even be working on two or three images simultaneously, going back and forth from them and figuring out, well, if this little boat doesn't work in that image, maybe it could work in a completely different image that could be a companion piece to that one. Eventually I get to the point of making test prints here in my studio. I print everything myself. Oh, I might go through 10 or 20 different 
versions of a test print, checking the details, the colors, making subtle changes to the image before I'm happy with it. Not all of my work involves people. I also enjoy sometimes taking a break from the 19th century photographs and just doing a simple landscape or a still life image. I love working with flowers, particularly in the springtime when I can go to the farmer's market and get some bouquets of fresh flowers and scan them and photograph them and put those together. Most of my floral pieces involve both scans and photographs in the same image. I like to capture each flower one by one and then I'm free to arrange the bouquet in my own way and put in subtle shadows and play with colors of individual flowers. I like the images to have kind of an open-ended narrative that can be deduced or interpreted by each individual viewer in a different way. Since we all have different backgrounds and different dreams, there's no way that any two people will come up with the same feeling or narrative for any one image of mine. I don't start by imposing my own vision or internal logic on the image. I kind of wait for it to be revealed to me and that's part of the exciting process of creating art.